Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. And we are the Yahoo and Horror YouTube channel. And we are doing the Law, Statutes, and Commandments of Messiah Yahushua. For those who do not know who Messiah Yahushua is, that is Jesus the Christ. There are no J's in Hebrew, so the man's name was never called Jesus. And so that's something we should be very aware of. There was no such person as God. There is a creator. His name is Yahuwa, yad Wavhead, wav -Hed, And um, that is what his name is. I am that I am. Behold the hand, behold the nail. And um, that is who we are. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Everyone alive? Yep. Yeah. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Today is month eight on our creator's calendar. That makes it the 20... Oh, 21st? It's the 20th. Oh, What's yeah, it's the 21st. 21st day on our creator's calendar, right? It is the 16th day on the Gregorian Babylonian calendar, and it is the... Fourth day of the week. Now, when is the um, satanic holiday um, Thanksgiving? When is that? It's the 28th. It's the 24th. It's the fourth Thursday of the month. Fourth. Now, if you think about this, and you think about what the, the classic of Thanksgiving is, right? You guys, everybody eats till they explode, and you're supposed to be giving Thanksgiving on one single day. And when you actually look at the roots of Thanksgiving, several years to before we ever... Um, celebrated Thanksgiving, there were a bunch of soldiers and they crispified the Indians. They put them in a little cage and they burned them and they heard of screamings and a horrible, whole bunch of horrible things. Several years after that incident, they actually started keeping Thanksgiving. So if you think it was where the Indians and the white man were together and the Indians were showing them how to make corn and all this stuff, it was nothing absolutely like this. In fact, the white people were very vicious to the Indians and it's not really much of a Thanksgiving day at all. Very vicious. It's now, next week. next week is when it is. So those are things that you want to separate yourself from the world. Now, I want to show you guys something real quick here. Um, this is on Yahoo and the Torah. And if you guys go over here and you go to online scriptures... If you guys notice what we're doing, we have, you can click on Genesis, and this is going to be really, really super awesome because let me show you the project that we are doing. This is it. So now we have these scriptures with the correct restored names that are available for everybody online, probably for the very first time ever. And so this is very, very cool. Um, once you get to the bottom of Bereshith 1, you can go to Bereshith I guess it didn't have the next one to the second one. But if you go to the second one, this is the cool stuff here, is it has all of the restored names of our creator in there, right? There's Yahua, And this is, um, this is a very, very good translation of scriptures. And if you guys, you guys know where we are getting this, we are turning all of the scriptures that we have into OCR, and we are going to put this up there. But that is not it. What we are going to do is once the entire scriptures is completely up and going, we are going to set this basically um, export it and provide it for WordPress for absolutely free. So anybody that has a WordPress site that wants to have the full scriptures with a restored name will be able to just take a little thing, stick it in your WordPress, and away you go, and everybody will be able to have this. And so we are um, asking people, that somebody already proofread um, one, and I actually sent Emissary of Elohim the proofread, but I think he missed it. He said it looked okay, but he missed a verse in there. So for those who are proofreading that actually caught that, thank you very, very much. We appreciate that, and um, we need some more proofreaders on these next things. And we'll be doing proofreading all the way through. Um, so there's, it's, gonna be a while it's, it's going to be a very long time before we get this done. But you guys can see the direction that we are going with that. So thank you guys very much for all the support and love that you guys have for our family. We really, really appreciate it. And our table is your table. Our family is your family. And your family is our family. We really appreciate all of you guys. And we are ending, not ending, but we are getting close to the end of Mark. And so that means we are going to be um, dealing with another crucifixion, which is always really super sad. And um, I guess let's get it on. Uh, your beard's going to your tea. And my beard's going to my tea. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I, I, I do appreciate that. I have my little hot tea right here, and I guess I had my beard in my tea, but thank you, Jade, for that. Um, <laughs> uh, I love you guys. All right, here we go. Now, the Pesach and Matzach was after two days, and the chief Kohenim and the scribes were seeking how to take him through treachery and put him to death. These criminals, man, they are just like, they couldn't get him through any other way. So they're like, how can we trick this dude and kill him? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, so we have a, a time frame, right? So we, we know that the Passover, 
um, is, is, was after two days, right? And mm-hmm. so we are in and around Passover time. Okay, two. And they said, not at the festival, lest there shall be an uproar of the people. And while he was in Bet Anaya, in the house of Shimon, the leper, and sitting at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flask of perfume, genuine nard, very costly, and breaking the flask, she poured it on his head. Um, Shimon the leper. Did we always know Shimon the leper? Mine says it suffers as a jar maker. Jar, that's what it was, the mm-hmm. jar maker. Mine says leper, though. Yeah, I think leper's the right thing. I think so. it's one of the lepers he heals. Maybe. It probably was. So anyway, we have a woman there, and she has an alabaster flask of perfume, Nard? Do you guys know what nard is? Uh, it's mm, mine's, sort of uh, mine's a spike nard. I yeah I don't I don't dang it I just lost that again. Um, it's some sort of like an herb. An herb spike nard. Yeah I don't know what that is honestly. Um, very costly. Okay, so it uh, it was very costly. In breaking the flask, she poured it on his head. Did I read the whole thing? Yeah, she, I'm in the leper. Yeah, okay, four. But there were some who were much displeased among themselves and said, "Why was this perfume wasted?" For it could have been sold for more than 300 pieces of silver and given to the poor. And they were scolding her. But Yahushua said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always. And whenever you want, you are able to do good to them. But you do, but you do not always have me. What she had, she used. She took it beforehand to anoint my body for the burial. Truly, I say to you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in all the world, what this woman did shall also be spoken of to her remembrance. And the Yahuda and Yahuda from Kerioth, one of the twelve, went up, went to the chief Kohenim to deliver him up to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him silver. And he was seeking how to deliver him up conveniently. So he's just like. I think he was mad because he could not get that 300 pieces of silver because we know he was a thief by nature. Like, that was, like, what he was before he met Yahushua. And I don't think it left him because he just went to the, the uh, Pharisees after this. But I think he's a little upset that he could not get that money. That he didn't get the money himself and took it and did what he wanted with it. Yep. And, and so, therefore, the money just conveyed him to do more evil. It's like the power of money over these people. It's just... The power of silver. What will a man sell his soul for for the silver? Would a man sell his word, the word of Yah, for some silver and gold? The answer is yes, absolutely. Okay, um, but is that the right answer? No. And so, yeah, this was um, y- Yehuda is Kiroth, Iscariot, as they call him, um, was the was the the money guy. He held on to the money bag, and so that is um, he's definitely into the money side of things. And on the first day of Matzah, when they were slaughtering the Pesach, his Talmudians said to him. Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Pesach? And he sent out, the, out two of his Talmudian and said to them, Go into the city, and there a man bearing a jar of water shall meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is the guest room in which I am to eat the Pesach with my Talmudian? So for those who have never ever heard like us read this there there's there are people that join in all the time that have never ever heard this reading so we got to remember this this is um for everybody and even though we have a small little ecclesia of people that are very um would you that are tried and true um i i just i looked down at my leg all of a sudden somebody started rubbing my leg and i looked down there caden's down with his foot but he was trying to pet the dog and so i i that was He's a little just... barky nancy <laughs> i looked down i all said will you please stop rubbing my leg <laughs> <laughs> sorry, uh, I'll try sorry, to the folks. dog. He's getting a little. Yeah, the dogs barky. are going wild here. There's always these background things over here that we. It's, Nicole's sitting there trying to comfort <laughs> Tubby, and uh, <laughs> that was just the oddest feeling. I, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> sorry, guys. Okay, so we are in Passover, right? This is Passover time. Tell me what are the laws, the statutes, and commands of Passover? Jaden, Eli, or Caden, any uh, one of you. The uh, commands are that we are supposed to. Bur- we're supposed to have a lamb, kill it, cook it. And we're supposed to not boil it. We're not supposed to bake it. It's just supposed to be roasted over an open fire. And we are supposed to eat it that same night. We're right. supposed to have it with wine. We're supposed to have it with unleavened bread. And we're supposed to have it with bitter herbs. We're supposed to eat it in haste as a remembrance of what happened to Yisrael when they left Egypt. And that was the command of the Passover. Right. And so what is, um, what is the significance of Passover? Why are they? Why is Messiah Yahushua? Right. I guess the question is people think that our Jesus the Christ, or Messiah Yahushua, 
got rid of all the law statutes and commands. That may would mean he got rid of the feast times as well. If that is the case, why is he about to go into a room where they're ready to do that? Why is he why is he obeying the commandments of our creator when he came to destroy the commandments? I don't know. If he was gonna follow them and then give it up the next day, I don't see his point of following it through his life. He'd be like, no, I don't need to follow it because I will get rid of this soon enough. And what do we know of a timeline of Messiah Yahushua? How many days left does he have to live? I believe one at He's this like, point. Yeah, he doesn't have very many. It's like, it was like right after this, he died. Yeah. So this is this is um, really sad times here. Okay, and his Talmudian went out and came into the city and found it as he said to them. And they prepared the Pesach. And evening having come, he came with the twelve. And as they sat and ate, Yahushua said, Truly, I say to you, one of you who is eating with me shall deliver me up. And they began to be grieved. And to say to him one by one, is it I? And another, is it I? And answering, he answering said to them, it is one of the 12, he who is dipping with me in the dish. Okay, so that didn't eliminate it very much, right? He just said it was one of the 12, he who is dipping with me in the dish. So that eliminates down to 12. The bin of Adam is indeed going as it has been written of him. But woe to that man by whom the bin of Adam is delivered up. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, Yahushua took bread, having barak it, broke it, gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. And taking the cup, giving thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. Okay, now I want to touch on this again because we have people that are unable to read their scriptures and people will say, well, we, we have a Levitical cling food and our Messiah just said that we need to eat his body. And another version says drink, you know, and I guess it will talk. I guess it doesn't show in this one. Um, it says drink. This is the, the it, essentially, the is it the next verse? Um, I don't think of that. I don't think it's in this one. Maybe it is. It's 24 in the NIV. Okay. And so, yeah, 24 in the NIV is this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to them, is our is our Messiah saying that we need to eat human flesh and drink human blood? Yeah. No. He's How do saying, we know this? He's Because I that's unclean foods. He's not going to sit there and say, you should eat things that are not good for you. You're not going to say, go against my father's Torah. What he's saying is that you are becoming part of my family. You're becoming part of my body when you take this and you take up the same burden I am taking up, which is we are going to live the Torah, but we are going to live a life that is full of oppression, but you're going to live through and you're going to become one with salvation. Right. Yeah. Good. 24. And he said to them, this is my blood, that of the renewed covenant, which is shed for many. Now, what is the renewed covenant, everyone? It is the covenant that was renewed. It's just a renewed contract. It's a contract that was just... What does it technically say? It's a covenant without sacrifices. It's a covenant for the house of Judah and the house of Israel. And what does it say? It says that he's coming to give us a new covenant, a renewed covenant. He, he says, says I, in the end, I will write my laws upon the hearts of everybody. They will owe, everybody from the least of the greatest will know me. They will, um, they, they will keep my laws, statutes, and commands. And I will, it basically says he will provide a Messiah for us. And that is the new covenant. But the new covenant is the same as the old covenant, except we have a, a priest, a Melchizedek priest who is a perfect priest. is not a man priest. And so we are able to be forgiven for our sins, but that does not give us a sin card. If we are living in sin, that is an abomination to our creator. Okay, let's continue on. 24, 25. Truly I say to you, I shall certainly no more drink of the fruit of the vine till the day when I drink it anew in the reign of Elohim. And having sung a song, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Yahushua said to them, All of you shall stumble in me this night, for it has been written, I shall strike the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after I am raised, I shall go before you to Galil. And Kepha said to him, Even if all shall stumble, yet not I. And Yahushua said to him, Truly I say to you that today, this night, before the cock shall crow twice, you shall deny me three times. But he sp spoke more strongly. If I have to die with you, I shall not deny you. And they all said the same. And they came to a place called Gath Shemen. And he said to his Talmudian, sit here while I pray. And he took with him Kepha and Yaakov and Yochanan. And he began to be greatly alarmed and to be deeply distressed. And he said to them, 
My being is exceedingly grieved, even to death. Stay here and watch. And he went on a little and fell on the ground and was praying that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all is possible for you. Make this cup pass from me, yet not what I desire, but what you. And he came and found them sleeping and said to Kepha, Shimon, are you sleeping? You were not able to watch one hour? Okay, verse 36 says, Abba, Father. This is a Trinity buster. Every single time that our creator and our the Messiah call out to each other in this fashion, it shows that they are not the exact same. If he is here saying, Abba, Father, but he is the Father, if he is sitting here asking himself to let the past cup from him, but he says, not what I desire, but what you, you would have to think that your creator was a crazy person. He would have to be somebody that was, was talking to himself, split personality, some sort of weird psychosis. They think they're the same person, but they claim they're not the same person, but they're, they also don't think they're the same person. It's really weird, right? So there is no Trinity. That a Trinity is a, is a sham. It is from the, the 325 Catholics, Creed of Nicaea, and it's a sham. And he came and found them sleeping, actually 38, watch and pray lest you enter into trial. The spirit is eager, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. And having returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. See, the bin of Adam is being delivered up into the hands of sinners. Rise up. Let us go. See, he who is delivering me up has drawn near. And immediately while he was still speaking, Yehuda, one of the twelve with a large crowd with swords and clubs, came from the chief Kohenim and the scribes and the elders. And the one who was delivering him up, who had given them a signal, saying, Whomever I kiss, it is he. Seize him and lead him away safely. And coming, going straight up to him, he said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and seized him. And one of those standing by drew his sword and struck the servant of the Kohen and Hagdadal and cut off his ear. And Yahushua answering said to them, Have you come out against as a robber with swords and clubs to take me? Daily I was with you in the Mikdash teaching, and you did not seize me, but let the scriptures be filled. And they all left him and fled. And a certain young man was following him, having a linen cloth over his nakedness. And when they seized him, he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. And they led Yahushua away to the Kohen and Haggadol. And all the chief Kohen and all the elders and the scribes came together. And Kepha followed him at a distance, even into the courtyard of the Kohen and Haggadol. And he was sitting with the officers and warming himself at the fire. And the chief Kohen and all the council were seeking witness against Yahushua to put him to death. And they were finding none. For many bore false witness against him, but their evidence did not agree. And some rose up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him saying, I shall destroy this Mishkin that is made with hands, and within three days I shall build another made without hands. And not even then did their witness agree. Then the Kohen and Hagdadal stood up. Eli? Sorry, we can't touch us at the same time, little buddy. Um, it just took me to school. Where am I at here? You're on 60. 60. It just took me to school. All right. I can't undo this. There it is. And I still can't undo it. This program has problems. Okay. Please don't touch it when I am. Please, Eli. Okay. Um, we're on 60? Mm-hmm. Then the Kohen and Hagdadal stood up in the center and asked Yahushua, saying, Have you no answer to make? What do these witness against you? But he remained silent and gave no answer. And again, the Kohen and Hagdadal asked him, saying to him, Are you Hamashiach, the bin of the Barak? And Yahushua said, I am, and you shall see the bin of Adam sitting at the right hand of the Almighty and coming with the clouds of the Shamaim. And tearing his garments, the Kohen and Hagdadal said, What further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be liable to death. And some began to spit on him and to blindfold him and to beat him and to say to him, Naba! And the officers struck him with the palms of their hands. And as Kepha was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the Kohen and Hagdal came. And seeing Kepha warming himself, she looked at him and said, And you were, the, were with Yahushua of Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, 
I do not know nor understand what you are saying. And he went out onto the porch, and a cock crowed. And the girl's servant saw him again and began to say to those who stood by, This is one of them. And again he was denying it. And after a little while, those who stood by again said to Kepha, Truly, you are one of them, for you are a Galilean too, and your speech is alike. And he began to curse and swear. I do not know this man of whom you speak. Okay, well, as they say, he swears like a sailor. He was kind of a sailor. He was a fisherman. So he was, um, he was saying bad words, right? Um, you know, he was cursing and swearing. So obviously, uh, Kepha was a little upset. And um, I guess that goes to a, a question. Is cursing or swearing a Torah commandment we're breaking? I don't think so. What? It shouldn't probably be said for sure. It shouldn't be said. Do we have any Torah commands um, that say... There's nothing that says no. don't say bad words. I mean, What does a bad word mean exactly? What is, what is it? I mean, you could take any word that you want to take. Like, we use Judas, right? Because we everybody hates Judas Iscariot. So that is could be a bad word. Anything you say is a it could possibly be a bad word. How do we get into trouble? Where is it a sin if we say a bad word? Uh, I think we take uh, yeah, who is named or not. That's definitely a problem. That would definitely, yeah, that's not the cursing I'm talking about. I'm not talking about saying the Lord, our Father's name in vain. That is a uh, abomination. That is not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking about like the words darn it or things of that same, but in a, in a different fashion. Is there a sin on this or is it just a bad word? How, how do we make this a sin if we're cursing? Um, how about if we're cursing at our neighbor? That's definitely. What if we're cursing at our wife, or we're cursing at our kids? That's or probably all all sinful. Probably what about raising our hands to the sky and cursing out Yah? Uh, you better watch out, lightning doesn't come down. Or yeah, right you better be careful. Yeah, the so, I mean, yeah, those are those those you could do. just interesting questions. I had. I don't have exact answers for it, but I thought it would be interesting. Seventy-two, and a second time, the cock crowed, and Kepha remembered the word that Yahushua had said to him before the cock crows twice. You shall deny me three times. And thinking on it, he wept. Okay. Um, anyone have anything? Um, no commands. Just uh, more evil from the Pharisees. And I guess the Talmudium kind of failed this one. Yeah, the Talmudium failed this one. But it was a very scary situation, right? It's real easy to think that you're tough and you're not going to... You will hold tough and, and you're, you're not going to fold. And then your leader comes and gets basically just destroyed, not destroyed, but they taken away from it for you. And um, your security blanket is gone. And a lot of it has to do with faith. A lot of it has to do with, you know, I would be sitting back. I would, I would, I would probably be scared as well. I, I would definitely be scared. We have a Messiah who's always talking about peace, who's always talking about this. But at the same time, he had already taken a whip and flipped the tables over and gone crazy as well. So they did see the other side of him, that he is able to be a violent um, entity if he needs to be a violent entity. So when he comes back, when Messiah Yahushua comes back, it's not going to be for peace. It's going to be for war. It's going to be to free us from all of this evil that is amongst us. And for everybody that is out there, I believe that we are all scattered people throughout the nations. I believe that we have been called. We have been sent the Torah. We have, we have had our eyes open and our ears open, and we are able to see this and hear this. And there's nothing better than walking in the Torah. There's nothing better than walking in the faith of Messiah Yahushua, but it's a two-way street. You can't have one without the other. It would be a one-way street. If you have Messiah Yahushua and you don't have the Torah, then you're going opposite of the road. The road that we need to be on is a small little road. It has a small little gate, and it's hard to get through that gate. And Messiah Yahushua says, most do not make it. And those should be fearful words that should fall on all our ears as we studied, show ourselves approved unto our creator, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, everybody. Thank you guys very, very much. Much love. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.